Hello and welcome to this video where I will be taking a look at the brand new 1.19 experimental snapshot. The deep dark has finally been added, the warden, all that good stuff that we've been waiting for for the very first time to the Java edition and we're going to be taking a look at it. Now if you're interested in how to actually install the snapshot, I've just uploaded a video just before this one so you can go ahead and check that out if you are interested in that. But the very first thing I want to check out is the deep dark which is actually a biome. So if we say slash locate biome and then deep dark right here we can locate a deep dark which is 2398 blocks away so let's teleport to that area i'm gonna swap to spectator mode here and i'm also going to give myself night vision and immediately we start to see some very very interesting things not only the ancient city which has been added but also these deep dark patches I'm, I'm gonna call them patches but what i want to check out first are these spots right here so these are spots that you might find underground when you are out caving and well as you can see they can contain quite a few blocks so some of the blocks that we have here is the skull sensor the skull striker the skull catalyst and then we have the normal uh, skulk stuff here and skulk vein. Now I want to take a look at these three blocks right here, mainly the skulk striker and the skulk sensor because they actually work together. So if I place down a skulk sensor right here, the skulk sensor, what that does is it detects sound around it, sound vibrations. So if I quickly remove this, as you can see, that detected that sound. If I break a block, you can see those particles going to it because though because of those sound vibrations now the skulk striker works together with the skulk sensor so when the skulk sensor detects sound waves it transmits that to the striker then when it detect when it gets a signal from the shock shock sensor sends out a warning signal to nearby wardens and that is what then causes the wardens to appear it says in the article that it initially might take some time for a warden to arrive, but you'll hear it responding in the distance. So we'll try and summoning the warden a few times later in just a bit. Now the skull catalyst is interesting. If a mob dies, so if we maybe say take a chicken here, and if I take another ice sword, if I spawn a chicken within those eight blocks and kill it, the XP is absorbed by the catalyst and you can see that this skulk stuff is generated where that mob died. And this will keep happening as long as something dies within an 8 block radius. So if I do it all the way over here, as you can see nothing happens that I get the XP, but if I do it within those 8 blocks, it happens. Now from my understanding, this stuff will decay eventually, but as long as it's close to the catalyst, it's going to decay much, much slower than if the catalyst isn't there. Now, if you're interested in picking up these blocks, you will be needing silk touch. And also the best tool for mining these things are a hoe. Now, I'm down here in a cave with two skulk spots right here in this open cave area. And I don't have night vision just to show you that these blocks actually do emit light. These skulk catalysts right here. And this is how it looks without night vision and my brightness is turned all the way up. Now the next thing I want to check out is the warden. As we've just covered how the warden spawns, I think it is only fitting that we check out the warden itself now. So taking a closer look at this thing, this guy is huge and he has a heartbeat. And well, I don't want to meet this guy when caving. This guy is creepy. And down he goes again. Now, this guy has an anger level and you can tell that by the hearts. Now these guys can't actually see. They use two ways of detecting you. Sound waves and smell. Now what I'm going to do here is I have set my spawn point and I'm going to get some netherite armor. I'm going to set my keep inventory game mode rule to true so I don't lose stuff when I die. And I'm going to head into survival mode here. And we're going to see how this thing reacts when we're actually 
near it in survival. And as you can see, it is using its blinding effect. And as you can see, it is now sniffing, trying to find us, and it is moving toward me right now. I'm shifting because otherwise it will hear me. If I unshift, it instantly detected that and starts sniffing towards me. To my last known location. I just stand still. It smelled me again. And if I try and run away... As you can see, the heartbeat races. It's getting very angry and it's charging towards me. And two hit with full netherite armor and I'm dead. That's... Pretty tough. And as you can see, this is without night vision. I am completely blinded. This is actually horrifying. And if you collide with it... Yeah, it will find you. <laughs> it will kill you. Now, I want to show something else. So if we trigger the warden to spawn again... You can hear the heartbeat. Okay, this time it didn't come instantly, so let's trigger it again. We hear it, so it's getting closer. And there it is. Now it got angry enough. Now what I want to show is you can actually use projectiles, aka arrows, and I believe slow bolts as well, to trick this thing. So if I shoot an arrow over there, it detected the movement, and it will go in that direction. And I can use that to my advantage to try and escape in the other direction. I can also shoot another one, which will then lead it in that direction. But you want to be careful, because if you do this within five seconds, it will grow angrier and angrier at the shooter, AKA you. Now that is too far out of the range, so let's shoot it in that direction. Now, if I just switch to survival mode here and I shoot an arrow over there but then shoot another one as you can see it is now moving towards me ignoring my arrow shots and of course if I try and run it's gonna get angry at me and okay that's creepy that's that's very creepy and yeah there I go this thing will also be disabling shields if you're carrying one, so no, you can't just tank the hits it does. It acts like a soundproofing material, so as you can see, well, most of the time anyway, it might be because I'm stepping on top of this thing, but as you can see, most of the time here, I can walk around just fine without it noticing my steps, but it does sometime like that. Attack when I go up, it seems, but not all the times. If I make a full wall here, you can see that I can just r run around just fine. So I think it is just detecting me jumping up onto this block sometimes, like there, when I get too close, maybe. That is something you can use to navigate around these things without alerting them. Now, finally, after having checked out these skulk spots and the warden itself, I think it's time that we lay eyes on the ancient city, which I'm honestly very, very excited about. Now we have a bunch of different rooms here that we're gonna be checking out and we also have some loot in them as well. So this looks like some sort of hallway made out of wool blocks, which are very interesting. I'm gonna turn off auto jump now. So as you saw there, I was just running casually. I completely forgot about these things, but this right here detected it and sent out a warning signal to nearby wardens. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's some of the things you need to be careful about. You can't just run around these things without potentially waking up a warden. You've got to be really, really careful. But here we have a room or a building kind of standalone right here, kind of sitting alone here. And we have a chest which also 
alerts that. So I'm gonna use this wall here to surround this chest. See if that works. Yep, that worked. So what do we got here? We got a few candles, we got some normal skull blocks, some bones, and some snowballs. Which you can use as well to trick the warden in going a different direction. We also have another interesting thing here. This could resemble the warden head. Very interesting. And we have some candles here. Maybe a grave? Maybe this could be a grave. We also have something here with a bunch of candles and a few chests as well. Let's take a look at what is inside. I'm gonna place some wool here so we don't alert any sensors. And we got an instant health potion too and some books in this chest. And just bones in this one. I'm gonna go into spectator mode to see if there's anything underneath, but no, it does not look like it. We do have, I just noticed this, we do have blue fire though, which is very interesting. We have an... We have more chests over here, but I just summoned the warden by placing down the wall, I think because this thing broke right when I placed the wall, so that's interesting. But we got an enchanted book in here, so we can get enchanted books in these. Piercing, a lot of books in that one. And aqua affinity. We also got a skulk sensor in this one. But yeah, other than that, we have a bunch of hallways, as we can see here. Now I have night vision, obviously, but if I were to remove the effects... We also have blue lanterns here. It is quite dark, but it looks seriously cool. Especially because it's generated in a cave like this. So awesome. Now this is some different a different area. We have basalt pillars here. Or we, we have basalt here. Is this smooth basalt? Polished basalt. And some interesting looking pillars or towers. And a little bit of a different hallway here to the other ones. I also saw this room and I just want to check it out because it looks a little bit different. Look at that beast. Yep, more books, bones and candles. Now the next exciting part of this is this area right here. This seems to be like the center of the ancient city, this tunnel or whatever this is, leading directly towards the center of it. And the other hallways kind of leading to the walls and going around it here. And we have a bunch, if I head into spectator mode, a bunch of blue fire around here with both soul soil but also soil sand. Now again, this does remind me of the head of the warden, but we have the reinforced deep slate right here. Which I do want to talk about a little bit. Now this block cannot be obtained in survival. But what is really cool about it is that it is completely blast resistant. So let's go ahead and check that real quick. If I just use this pillar right here and I make a little bit of a foundation. Place the TNT. And let's make let's just make a cube here. Let's make a full on 3x3x3 three by three by three cube. Turn on the TNT. Put that up there. Nothing happening at all. What you can do, however, with this reinforced deep slate, which is very, very interesting and very unique, is that you can move it with pistons. So an unobtainable block in vanilla, it can only be moved with pistons and it is completely blast resistant. This could be a very, very interesting block to use for both redstone contraptions, but also other things in general. Also something to note here is that we have waterlocked skulk sensors in all of these cups. Should we call them cups? And we have redstone lights here which looks like when I walk around they detect sound but they are silent and they then output a redstone signal under them indicating that there's sound. Maybe this acted as an alert system? That sound was getting through because it does look like that the civilization that lived here built with, well, some proof in mind. Now I have pretty much covered the things that I want to cover today, but there are one new thing that I want to take a look at. And that is the swift sneak enchantment, which goes on your boots. So if I get swift sneak three on my boots here and I equip them, I think what this does... 
Yep. It allows you to walk faster when you sneak, which I think will be very useful for looting these things because you won't be able to just run around because you'll alert every show in every uh, skulk sensor. So having this as an enchantment on your boots is really going to be beneficial. Now I assume when I then walk with them, I assume they will take durability damage. No, they don't. That might change. But anyways, I think I have covered what I want to cover in this snapshot. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of the deep dark and if you are as excited as I am for this to finally arrive. This is going to make caving very a little bit more scary because you might have a skulk sensor nearby. When you break an ore, it's going to alert the skulk sensor and well, the warden might come and try and eat you up. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Again, if you want a guide to how to install this snapshot, you can click the video right here on screen. Or if you're interested to watch something else, you can click this uh, video that YouTube thinks you'll like to watch. So yeah, click either of those, of those two and I hope you enjoy it and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.